good people? Welcome back to another video. Did you guys enjoy the last video? I know you did. Well, guess what? We got another one coming up. This one is, is pretty fun. This is a legend coming on. We have legends. That's all we have on this channel is our legends. Um, but let's get this out the way first. So you don't miss anything. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell notification because every time we post a video, you will be notified. And that way you can keep up with the P and Chantel show. You know you like us. You know you do. You know you do. Well, anyways, uh, be safe out there. Enjoy the video. This is part one. There's two parts of this video. This is part one. Enjoy it. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Uh, enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. So, Mo, you want to take us through a little bit of, like, your journey and how you got to where you are now? Uh, so... You know, played in college, um, about halfway through, I knew I wanted to coach. Uh, and so the coaching staff um, kind of fostered that, uh, showed me how to do scouting reports. Back then, you clip tape to tape. So how to clip games, um, how to watch games, what they looked for. Um, my original plan was I was going to play until the wheels fell off. And I just decided, hey, I'll jump right into coaching. Uh, I won't go play. Um, got my first job at Holy Cross uh, with Coach Gibbons um, and will forever be grateful. Uh, I applied to about 60 schools, um, GAs, ops, assistants, um, and, you know, he took a chance and, and gave me my first job. And then from there I went to University of New Hampshire, Towson University, uh, then the University of Massachusetts, Virginia Tech, Washington, Arizona, um, and now uh, I am the head coach at the University of Hartford. So um, I knew I wanted to be a head coach. I didn't know how I was going to get there. Um, I just knew that uh, if I tried to learn uh, and pick up things from people, uh, take the good, leave the bad, um, yeah, or even just take the things that I thought uh, – I, I admired, um, then one day I'd have an opportunity and, um, Hartford gave me that. So that's where I am today. Okay. Mo, you literally just talked about like so many schools that you've been to. So you've been like all over the country. So like what went into your decisions into taking those jobs, considering there's a lot of coaches that, you know, stick to different regions and things like that. Um, when I was at the university of New Hampshire, um, I had been talking to one of my coaches from college, Chris Daly, um, who's a, a mentor of mine, and we were just chatting about opportunity and um, where that can take you, and I had a chance to go down to Towson um, with a guy who had recruited me. He was an assistant at Virginia Tech, and he recruited me back when I was a player, so um, he had called me and offered me the job. Um, they were kind of on the rise. Um, he'd done a really good job. Uh, and I had called her and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be far from home right now. I'm like two hours and 45 minutes away from home. My parents come to games. They come and stay with me. Like I can drive home on the weekend or even just on a Friday. And CD was like, you can't think that way. She was like, this game's going to take you all over. And, um, you have to be able to willing to do whatever. And so from that point on, I just said, um, Pretty much every year I got a job offer. Um, after Once I got into the game, I had different opportunities at different places. Some places I stayed. Um, I didn't stay. UMass was the longest place I stayed. Um, but there was reasoning, reason for leaving each place, whether it was I left, I left Holy Cross to go to UNH to be the recruiting coordinator. So that was... Something that was really big back then was to be a recruiting coordinator. I was young, um, and so I was like, "Well, I can't, I can't pass up this opportunity." So, um, you know, uh, I just have never thought that you you have to take an opportunity, see how it fits you, uh, and then and then move from there. Okay, so we're gonna backtrack 
because you decided not to tell everybody where you played, which I will happily tell everybody that you played at uh, the University of Connecticut for the Gino Orieva. You won three national championships, correct? Yep. You played for some of the best coaches in the game. Not coach, coaches, right? In my opinion, yes. Right. So, can you go into your opinion of what makes UConn so successful? Uh, well, I think it's a lot of things, but uh, I think the number one thing is consistency. Um, you know, it's a mentality. Um, it's He teaches you and the staff teaches you how to be a better person, um, not just a, a better basketball player. It's kind of the whole picture. It's um, how to dress when you go to a nice restaurant, how, you know, where do you sit when you go to class, um, how you talk to professors, um, when you meet somebody, writing them a handwritten note, um, all these tiny little life lessons, um, I think, help you grow up and become a, a better person. Uh, but it's it's the structure of it. It's You're going to do it this way because it works. Um, and if you don't want to do that, then you can go somewhere else. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it's not it's not very hard. It's pretty simple. Um, so. Okay, so Morgan, can you go into detail of like what your role was on the team while you were there? Um, so I, I went in. I was an All American. I was one of the top ten players in the country. Um, you know, I was ready to take take over spots and, and run the team and. Um, you know, I had a I had a, a couple injuries, um, and it slowed me down a bit. And I put on a bunch of weight, so um, I never thought I wasn't going to be what I had aspired to be when I got there. I never, even through all that stuff, um, you know, Barbara Turner was playing ahead of me, uh, and she was unreal. Like every day in practice, I would compete against her. Every day in practice, I would compete against Swin Cash and and Shay Ralph, and Sue, and Dee, and um, I never thought that I couldn't beat them, um, or that I shouldn't be able to, um, and eventually, uh, you sit back, and you're like, I never stopped working, um, I put in the same work, I got up the same 500 shots before every practice, and the free throws, and I went and did extra cardio, and did the extra lifts, and um, I put everything I had into it, um, but you just have to, whatever role that your role is, um, you just have to do it like it's the most important thing. So, um, you know, I, my, my senior year, I started, I'd play the first five minutes of each half, um, and I would play those five minutes like they were my last five minutes. Uh, and I did everything I possibly could, um, you know, to – to make the team better, uh, and that came down to you know, setting screens or uh, blocking out. Um, I did it to the best of my ability, uh, and it wasn't what I went there to do by any means, but um, it's what it's what it ended up being, um, and I, I don't regret any of that. Um, I think those things make you better in different ways. You know, adversity is, yeah, it teaches you a lot. So... How do you get like? How do you get a kid like you to embrace that role? Because especially now you're talking about there's a lot of kids now. We have like a transfer epidemic, and a lot of kids are transferring, and a lot of them are best players coming out of high school. Then they get to where they are, and it doesn't work out for them, and they leave. But you didn't. So like, how do you get kids like that to embrace their role and fight through that adversity? Uh, you know, I just I I think just informing them. Um, this isn't easy. If you look around the country and you look at impact freshmen um, on these, you know, high profile at, at these high profile f programs, there are very few. Right. Now there there are be kids that that may have a good game here or there, or average, um, you know, eight or nine points, which is amazing and awesome. But you gradually, most players gradually grow into their role, um, whatever that may be, and you just have to be willing. Um, and, and I think my parents, my other coaches growing up, um, my, you know, I played soccer too. So my soccer coaches, my basketball coaches, it wasn't like, Hey, everything's given to you. Um, I had to earn from a young age, everything. I mean, my sister was a better player than me until, uh, I was about a sophomore in high school. 
Um, and so I was trying to beat her every day. <laughs> so it's not like, uh, it, it just, this is, you know, I could have left and gone somewhere else and, but I don't think that would have made me the person I am today. Um, and I, I never literally even thought about it. So, yeah, it wasn't, and UConn wasn't what UConn is now when I was there. Right. So they had won in 95 and then they won in 2000 right before we came in. Um, and so I, I actually wanted to go to Tennessee. So really, um, yeah, it wasn't Tennessee, you know, Shmigo Holstas from New York. I'm from Vermont. So oh, wow. I had always, you know, I was in the driveway playing three, two, one, and I was scoring against Shmigo Holspa. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like, Oh, you're here. Be grateful. I, I worked every day just as, as though I was an all American. Um, you know, so, Okay, Mo, so you just named some, like, legends in the game of basketball that you had the honor of playing with, right? Mm -hmm. Suber, Dennis Rossi, Swin, Swin Cash, some of them are actually still playing. And I'm, I know you have some good relationships with them still. Mm -hmm. um, to the point that Sue Bird was your officiant in your wedding, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, so how was that moment for you? And then what do you, how do you say... Like, what do you think sports does for those relationships that you did build? Um, you know, it was, it was, she's the one that kind of introduced us. So it was like, hey, you did this. Now you want to marry us? And uh, she was like, yeah, sure. Um, depends on the schedule. So she ended <laughs> up having, she didn't play on that day. So she was able to do it. Um, you know, I think. Sports for me have always, I'm a weirdo, so um, <laughs> I think it's always been a place that I've actually felt normal. Um, it's like my language. So if I'm, you know, dribbling up the court, I could talk to you where if I was off the court, I wouldn't know what to say. Or uh, it was just always the, the language, my common denominator, whether I was playing against guys or other girls or um, playing against players that were better or, or I was better than them. It didn't matter. It was just my language. And I think, um, you know, my relationships through this game are, you know, they're everything. It's, it's uh, you know, being able to talk to you right now, you know, having had the opportunity to coach you um, and now being able to watch you grow um, as a young coach, uh, you know, those things – are important and it's kind of why you do it. I mean, you win games, you lose games, but in the end it's, it's the relationships you build that, that really carry you on. I mean, it's why you do it. So.